All right, all right, all right. So we are given a physics model. Uh, H equals negative 16T squared plus 122.8T. That's a typo. Uh, I didn't type it. I hand wrote it. We're going to call it a typo. T plus 16.9. And we're told that this model's the height of a projectile in feet at any given time. T. And we're asked three questions. A, B, and C. A is how long will it take to, re to reach a height of 50 feet? What is the maximum height? And then how long will it take to return to the ground? Now, I'm going to work all three of these, but I'm actually going to work part B first. I'm going to work part B first, okay? So, to find the maximum height, there's two forms you can have a quadratic in. You can have h equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and that's called expanded form or standard form, or you can have h equals a x minus k plus d, okay? Or any whatever letter, you pick any letters you want to, okay? Um, and this is going to be your horizontal translation. And this is going to be your vertical translation, okay? And so if you've seen anything in algebra where they translate graphs left and right and up and down, ta-da! And then, of course, um, this is going to be your stretch and your shrink. It's also, if we put a negative in front, it would be your reflection. Okay, so this will determine. And I want you to notice something, that this is an A and this is an A, and that is not by accident. So if you do what I'm about to do and this number changes, you've made a boo-boo. Okay? So we're going to start with part B. We're going to start with part B, and I'm not going to take up the whole page. I'm just take a part of the page. Okay? So... And I am going to walk you through this. So if you've watched my video on how to complete the square or how to put an equation in vertex form, we're going to do the same thing, except this time with messy numbers. So this is how you would do it in a physics class, not in a math class, okay? Because we have messy numbers in physics. Okay, so here goes. We're going to take this polynomial. We're going to write it down. H equals negative 16T squared plus 122.8T plus 16.9. And we're going to know how many significant digits we want our final answer to. And we're going to keep our values to one more significant digit than that. Okay? So if I know they want this to three significant figures, I'm going to keep everything to four. And that's going to keep my answer correct. Okay? So first thing we're going to do is we need to make this guy equal to one. So we're going to divide everything by negative 16. And that includes this guy. Now, what do we get? We get h over negative 16 equals t squared. That's easy, right, because the 16s cancel. And then I want to say 122.8 divided by negative 16, and I get negative 7.675t, okay? And then uh, I'm going to do this third one here. It's going to be about 1, but 16.9 divided by 16 is going to be 1.05, so this will be minus 1.05625. Uh, and I'm a big fan of not rounding at all um, until you get to your final answer, unless you literally get answers this long, okay? And in that case, you, you tend to truncate them a little bit, okay? Cool. Next step is we're going to move this constant to this side. So we're just going to add 1.05625 to both sides. So I get h over negative 16 plus 1.05625. And that's going to be equal to t squared minus 7.675t. Okay? Now, switch colors here. I'm going to say plus blank, plus blank. Okay? And what am I going to do? Well, I'm literally going to take this number and divide it by 2. Okay, so if I take uh, 7.675, and folks often ask me, does, is it negative 7.675 or is it positive 7.675? It actually doesn't matter, okay? Um, but, but if it helps you out, use the negative, okay? So if I divide that by 2, I get negative 3.8375, okay? 3.8375. And if I stick a negative in front of that, it's fine. 
but then I'm going to square it. Square it. Okay, so if you've seen me do this before, you know the deal. Divide by 2 and square it. All right, cool. So take that number on my calculator and I square it. And I get 14.7262. And I'm going to stop at 7264. If you work this along with me, there's more, but six significant digits is a lot. Okay, now because I added 14.7264 to the right hand side, I need to add it to the left-hand side. So I'm going to say plus 14.7264. Cool. Now that guy and that guy can be added together. So plus 1.05625. All right. So here's what we get. We get H over negative 16 plus 15.7827. Two seven is equal. Now, here's where the magic happens. This polynomial, we just forced it to be a perfect square trinomial. A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. Okay? Well, if this number here is B squared, so I'm going to write that down. If this number here is B squared, this number here is B. And a perfect square trinomial always factors into a plus b or a minus b. And the sign will match whatever's right here. So if this was a plus, I would write a plus b. Since this is a minus, I'm going to write a minus b. Quantity squared. Okay? It sounds crazy. It works every time. Okay? And if you want to get the details of it, see my video on completing the square. Cool. Now what? Well, I got to move this guy over and multiply by negative 16. Basically, solve for h. So if I move this guy over, right, I get t minus 3.8375 squared minus 15.7827. And then our last step is we're going to multiply this guy. And this guy, and this guy, by negative 16. And when we do that, we get h equals negative 16 t minus 3.8375 squared. Plus, and I have no idea what that number times negative 16 is, but let me multiply it real quick. And I get 252.5. 5225, give or take a few thousandths, okay? Now, if you've done anything with shifting algebraic functions, you know what a horizontal and a vertical translation are. If this is my horizontal translation, and this means that the function was moved to the right, 3.8375, and this means it was moved up, 252.5, okay? So it's moved to the right and up. Where's the vertex? The vertex is at 3.8375 comma 252.5225. Okay? Now, in a math class, that's going to be X and Y. Right? In a math class, that's going to be X and Y. But if you look at this equation, this original equation, right? This would be Y equals blah, blah, X squared plus X plus... 12 or whatever, okay? So H is Y, T is X, okay? So in this particular example, this is T, time, and this is H, height. Now, they didn't ask for the vertex. In a math class, we'd ask you for the vertex. This would be the answer. They asked for the maximum height. Well, again, go back to your algebra class, negative 16 means that this thing was reflected and it points downward. The maximum is going to be at that vertex. This is the time it took for the projectile to get to the maximum. And this, right, height goes in this direction. This is the maximum height. So the maximum height is equal to what? 252.5, whatever they tell you to round to, okay? And then somewhere in the problem, they're going to tell you, hey, was this in meters? Was it in feet? Was it in yards? Was it in miles? Was it in kilometers? Whatever. Okay. And so you'll put whatever that unit is. 
and that'll be your final answer. And in my case, this particular formula is for feet. Okay, so that's part B, the maximum height. Okay, now back to part A. Part A said, how long will it take to reach a height of 50 feet? So here's what we do. Where we had H, we're going to put 50. Okay. And then we're going to solve for T. Well, T happens to make a quadratic. T squared. Okay. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. Well, to use the quadratic formula, this guy's got to be set equal to zero. So we're going to subtract 50 from both sides. And we get zero equals negative 16T squared plus 122.8T. And uh, if I take 16.9 and subtract 50, I'm going to get negative 33.1. Okay. Now, because we have decimals, we're going to not try factoring or completing the square or anything crazy. We're going to go straight to the quadratic formula. Okay. So that's A. That's B. And that's C. And if you remember your quadratic formula, right? Opposite of B, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And we're going to plug these numbers in. Okay, we're going to plug these numbers in. So the opposite of B would be negative 122.8 plus or minus 122.8 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times negative 33.1. And the big thing here, guys, you got a negative, a negative, and a negative. So those three negatives are going to end up making this a subtraction. Okay, so make sure that you do this number squared minus this product of those three numbers. And that's all going to be over 2a. Well, a was negative 16. 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. I just skipped that step. And now, literally, we're going to type this whole thing into our calculator and get our two answers. Okay? Um, well, I'm not going to type the whole thing. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to square this. Okay, so I'll actually show you. Let me pull my calculator on screen and see if I can show you. Okay, so I'm going to take 122.8 squared. I'm going to just press enter. Okay, minus. Now, I already figured out that this minus, this minus, and this minus is just going to make a minus. And so I'm just going to say that times that times that. So I'm going to say 4 times 16 times 33.1. And that gives me this number here. Okay, so that number squared minus those that product there. Gives me this number. Well, I need to take the square root of that. So I'm going to say square root of that answer, and that's what I get. Okay? So now let me show you what I use that for. So I take this whole thing, and I just whittle it down to this. 122.8 plus or minus 113. And I'm going to round this to 85.85, because .85, I think that's plenty. And that's going to be over negative 32. Okay? Over negative 32. Okay? Now, literally, I need to find two answers. One is going to be this number minus this number, and one's going to be this number plus this number, both divided by 32. And I'll show you how I do that as well. So I'm going to move that to the side and put this up here. So I'm going to say negative 122.8 minus 113.85. All right, there's what I get divided by negative 32, and I get 7 point, I'm going to round that to 7.40, right? Because if I, if I say I'm going to round to this place, I look to the right, it's a 5, so I'm going to add 1 to that, so 39 plus 1 is 40, so that's going to be 7.40. Now, to get that, I said this guy minus this guy. So this time around, I'm going to say this guy, 122.8 plus 1. 13.85, I get a pretty small number, and I'm going to divide that number by negative 32, and I get 0.279, which I'm going to call 0.28, okay, so 0 0.28, and both of these will be in seconds for this given problem, because they're time values, okay, and guess what, guys, that is my answer to part A, that's my answer to part A. And just to make sure that you're kind of with me on this and that you kind of agree with what I'm saying here, okay? Our original function 
this leading term is negative. Okay, so a quadratic with a negative leading term is going to point downward. Okay, so here's what the graph would look like. Something like this, right? And we're going to go at 50 feet. And what are we saying? The projectile hits that 50 feet, keeps going, comes back down and hits that 50 feet again. And that's why we get these two answers. Okay, so it hits that 50 feet very early on, and then it hits it again on the way down. Okay, cool. So that's part B, or excuse me, part A, part A. Now, part C, how long will it take to return to the ground? Part C is identical to part A with one difference. So part A, what did I say? H was equal to 50. For part C, where's the ground? That's H equal to zero. So I literally take my original equation. I take negative 16 T squared plus 122.8 T plus 16.9, and I set that equal to H. Now what? Quadratic formula. A is still negative 16. B is still 122.8. But notice something. C is different, right? We had 33, negative 33, positive 16. So it will be a different answer than part A. It will be a different answer than part A because your C value is different. But the process is the same. And so you'll put through here and you'll get two answers. Now here's the fun part. You go in, you'll get two answers. And your answers will be something like, I'm just going to make these up. These are not the correct answers. I'm just going to make these up, okay? It'll be like negative 0.11 and positive 8.08 or something, okay? And those are probably close, but they're not right, okay? Here's the problem. Time cannot be negative. And so that is what we like to refer to in math as an erroneous answer. It actually happened before the projectile was launched. So there's only one answer to part C, and it's going to be a little bigger than this because it still had to make it back to the ground, if that makes sense to you. Okay? So try to find those answers. I'll probably put them in the description of the video, but I'm not going to work them out. Um, but, but plug these numbers in. Again, those two numbers are the same. The only change is going to be C. Um, so if you understood part A, you can do part C. Give it a try. Let me know if it helps. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments.